morning. I hope you're all doing well. Today is week five of our Nourish series, and we are gonna change things up a bit and look at other ways that we can nourish ourselves through food. Um, and there's no one better to do this than Elizabeth Johnson. I've known her for almost a decade, and she's really an incredible chef um, and also teacher. She's taught at, at many different culinary schools. She's been featured on 60 Minutes. Uh, she's been named as the Food is Medicine Guru by James Beard. And whether you're partaking in the cooking today or you're just gonna watch, my goal is to really help give you some new inspiring tips and nuggets to change things up and maybe look at the way you think about food a little bit differently. But as we go along, if you have questions and you are joining, please type those into the questions box and I'm gonna be monitoring those along the way. So I will be reading those to Elizabeth as she has questions. Um, and as, as we have in all of the other sessions, I really invite you to just enjoy, you know, put your cell phone aside and just let yourself enjoy kind of the nourishment that comes from cooking. And I first got to know Elizabeth um, because I was helping her. She was starting a, a juice, juicing company. And so I helped look at the Ayurvedic aspects. And since then, she's actually started her own restaurant called Farm Table in San Antonio where she really, she cooks incredible food, but they also look a lot at how we can use nutrition, spices, herbs, and a lot of different things to um, bring in more nourishment. And a lot of what she's talking about has, is actually infused with Ayurveda, which I shared a little bit in our first session together. And Ayurveda is, as we've said before, there's a lot that we can learn from it when it comes to food. And so we're gonna be sharing a few different things today that really incorporate some of those principles. And we'll see at the beginning, we'll start by doing that and looking at a ginger pickle, which is um, lemon juice, ginger, a little bit of salt, and that we take in at the beginning of the meal and it's thought to really kindle the digestive juices, get the fire going. And then we're gonna be looking at different teas that we can incorporate that also, again, there's this big theme in digestion. In Ayurveda, it's thought that when our digestive fire is functioning really well, we're able to digest, absorb, and assimilate all of the different foods that we're eating. And that allows us to find more nourishment um, and healing from those. And so that's, that's a big piece that we're gonna be talking about. And then if you remember the different tips we talked about back, kind of taking it full circle from our first session together, we looked a lot at those things that are really good for fall the things that are grounding, that are warming, that are gonna nourish our bodies. And that's, that's what a lot of the things that we've chosen to, to share with you today include. So it's, we're gonna be making that ginger pickle. We're gonna be looking at teas. There's a tea, a cumin coriander fennel tea, which is really phenomenal for digestion. And then we're gonna be making a, um, a squash soup. And squash is a root vegetable. It's very earthy, it's very nourishing. And then at the end, we're gonna be making um, a, a date shake, which is almonds, dates. You can add a little bit of spices. You can add cocoa to it. And this is one that I personally make a lot um, in my house for my kids, because it's just, it's full of a lot of good nutrition. It's thought to build life force in Ayurveda and to really help nourish um, our systems. And so those are the different things that we're gonna be looking at. So without further ado, I would love to jump in and I thank Elizabeth Johnson so much for joining us this morning and let's get started. Thank you so much, Carrie. So the first ingredient that we're going to talk about today is something called CCF and it is a tea made with three very digestive spices. They're actually cooling spices. They have the effect of gently detoxing the body and they also help us with digestion and from a flavor perspective, what I love about this tea is that it's savory, and very few teas are actually savory. And so, when you're drink, when, when, when you're eating your food, to have it or to complement it with a warm tea obviously helps with hydration. It helps with digestion, but it also tastes really good because it's savory. So, if you see the different seeds that we have in here, it's a, it's a one to one ratio of cumin, coriander, and fennel, and then I add a little bit of coriander to my mix. So uh, green cardamom pods uh, right here, as well as coriander, fennel, and cumin. 
And all you have to do is dry toast these ingredients in a, uh, in a dry pan. You should not use any oil whatsoever. And when we dry toast them in a dry pan, what happens is something called the Maillard reaction, which is actually a phenomenon where the strands of protein in, uh, that, that, that are inherent in each of these ingredients come together and it has the, 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 the effect of making it taste more delicious. So it's why bread tastes better when you bake it. It's why coffee beans are roasted. So we dry toast these ingredients to bring out the natural flavors and to make the flavors really sing. And what I've done is back here, I had um, I, I had a little bit of water that I brought to a boil, and I put my I, I put about a tablespoon worth of my seed mix in there. Okay. And what so? Now we're going to talk about the ginger pickle. And so what we have here is a piece of ginger, um, and this particular piece of ginger is um, it's a rhizome. So ginger and turmeric. Two of the ingredients that we're going to work with today, um, you can find them mo in most grocery stores today. Uh, ginger and turmeric are anti-inflammatory superfoods, so um, you might be a little bit um, uh, intimidated by these things. But if you have a peeler, like a vegetable peeler, or even if you just have a spoon, you can very easily scrape the skin off of the turmeric, or if you would prefer to use a, um, a potato peeler, you can do that as well. We actually like to save all of the peels from our ginger and our turmeric because we use them in a multitude of recipes at the restaurant. So um, I'm a, uh, I have a restaurant here in San Antonio, Texas called Farm Table, which for me is a synonym for culinary medicine. And so at Farm Table, we take all the peels from a lot of the, the vegetables and the rhizomes that we cook with, as well as the fruits, and we use them to create infusions. We use them to create stocks. Um, it, so many of the phytonutrients in our plants actually reside in the skin. So it's really good to make sure that we, that we save all those good skins, one, because of the phytonutrients, and two, because of the cost. So if you look at the cost of ginger and turmeric that you buy fresh in the grocery store, they're actually quite expensive. I would say that they're on par with like fish. So it's, it, it's, it's all about utilizing all of the product as opposed to throwing it away. Uh, so as, as Carrie mentioned, we, um, you, can, you can either grate the ginger or you can cut it very thinly. And here I have uh, very thin slices of ginger that are marinating with lemon juice. I've put a little bit of uh, pink salt. We like to use the pink Himalayan salt at the restaurant and a dab of honey. And at the restaurant, we actually serve this um, in a spoon uh, with, a, a, with a little bit of fresh turmeric as well as a spearmint leaf. And the reason we do that is because when we do that, we actually have all six flavors in the Ayurvedic flavor wheel present at one time. And I like to use that as a teaching tool because most people have never intentionally eaten all six flavors at once in the mouth. And when you when you actually try all six flavors at once, it is an amazing experience. And it, it, I, I call it a symphony in the mouth and it's, it's really fantastic. So this uh, ginger, this pickled ginger is used to kindle the digestive fire. It's almost, uh, um, it communicates with the body, it communicates with the stomach. It lets it know that it can kind of start its engine and it can get ready because now, you know, the food's gonna come. So we like to send this out um, as an almost like an amused bouche to our guests in the restaurant. And so that's the ginger pickle. That is the uh, CCFT. And I also just want to say one more thing about the CCFT. You can grind all these ingredients and use them as a dry rub. So you can use these ingredients as a tea and you can also use it as a seasoning. So we use this as a garnish and we also use this um, uh, to, to dry rub uh, different recipes. So um, we use this for meats especially. So the next thing that we're going to cover is actually the soup. So the soup that we're making today, um, I mentioned earlier during our phone call that it's inspired by a Brazilian soup that comes from the northeastern part of Brazil and it's called a moqueca, spelled M-O-Q-U-E-C-A. Now typically this is a very rich stew 
made with seafood and a red palm oil called dende oil. I removed the dende oil, I removed the seafood, and I made it a vegan um, everyday soup. And it gets the creaminess from uh, from coconut. So if you uh, if, if you buy coconut flakes at the grocery store, instead of using instead of using coconut milk, I actually create my own coconut milk by using uh, by using coconut flakes. So these beautiful coconut flakes right here have a lot of wonderful saturated fat in them. If you did not have coconut flake, you could substitute with uh, coconut milk. I just try not to buy things out of the can. I try to make everything myself, but you can find good quality organic coconut milk um, like this one right here. So I brought that just to show you. So the, the recipe is super simple and it is such a crowd pleaser. Um, I don't think, we, we actually can't take this recipe off the menu at, at the restaurant because people love it so much. And so it changes throughout the year based on the squash that we have in season. So this, that's another reason I love this soup is because in the summer, when we have an abundance of yellow squash, yellow squash is not my favorite vegetable, but it makes a beautiful soup with this recipe. Now, right now, in the wintertime, we're using butternut squash. Uh, for this particular recipe, we're using butternut squash. You can also use acorn squash, but if you can see the different ribs on the acorn squash, it's a little bit more difficult to, um, it's a little bit more difficult to chop, so, you know, take it easy on yourself. You can also find butternut squash today, especially in this season, already cut, already fabbed in the grocery store so that you don't have to go to the trouble of peeling the butternut squash and then taking the seeds out and cutting it yourself. So the ingredients for this particular dish are the butternut squash, the sweet potato, a yellow onion, ginger that's already been peeled and grated. And the reason that's important is because we don't want to strain the soup. We want to blend it after we've cooked it. And if we have not uh, grated it on a microplane, like one of these, then you're going to get the hair from the, uh, from, from the ginger. We do the same thing with the turmeric. So we peel the turmeric and then we grate it with a microplane like this. And then, we, and then it's ready to add to our recipes, and we don't have to worry about passing it through a strainer. So right here behind me, um, in my pot, I've got my onion. I'm going to begin sweating my onion with a little bit of oil and water, and then I add my coconut right here. I'm gonna add my coconut flake, as well as my turmeric. And the turmeric's gonna give it a beautiful color and my ginger. And again, this is a, it, it can be an everyday soup, or a little bit later we'll talk about how we can dress this soup up and make it something that you would even serve at your Thanksgiving table. So we're gonna start sweating our onion in a little bit of coconut oil with our turmeric and our ginger. The next thing that we can do is we can talk about what this would be like in an electric pressure cooker. So right now, this is the bowl. This is the bowl of an electric pressure cooker. And an electric pressure cooker is actually very easy to use. You shouldn't be afraid to use it. Um, I actually am far less afraid to use an electric pressure cooker than I am one on a gas stove that is, is, is a traditional pressure cooker. Why? because the pressure cooker has a valve on the, on, on the lid that will not open um, if there's too much pressure. So the, the unit cannot explode on you. It cannot hurt you. What you can do is you can burn something inside of it if you don't put enough water in it. But otherwise, it's actually a very safe and a very convenient tool for you to use in your kitchen. And I prefer using things like an electric pressure cooker to a microwave or other items like that because um, because it gives you a really wonderful tasting product in a very short period of time. So highly recommend the electric pressure cooker. If you don't have one in your in your kitchen, you can get one online. They cost about a, a, a really good quality one would cost about $150. You can cook beans in it. You can cook rice. You can cook other grains like quinoa or uh, or oats or grow. 
arrows, it, you can put just about anything in it. So the, the way that we would load everything into the pressure cooker is a little bit different. We would actually put all of our ingredients into the electric pressure cooker. We would set it on pressure cook for um, a specific period of time. Um, and then when it finishes cooking, which is typically about eight to 10 minutes, uh, we would allow the steam valve to release, and then we would open it up, and then we would transfer all the all the ingredients from our, our electric pressure cooker to a blender. And then we would be very careful about blending, so while the, the soup is hot, because you're gonna get a better uh, consistency when it's hot. So once you've done that, you have this beautiful soup. So this soup right here is, um, is, is, is already blended and it has a beautiful, beautiful yellow color. So that turmeric that we added really accentuated the color of the, um, the, the natural color of our butternut squash as well as our, as well as our um, sweet potato. And so now what I can do is a little bit, um, in just a few minutes, we will, we will uh, plate this, we will put this into a bowl. And then I like to garnish with something like pepita seeds. So if you've never heard of pepita seeds, these are the seeds that come inside the pumpkin. So I'm a big proponent of garnishing with um, ingredients that are relevant to the actual ingredients that we cook with. And so um, if, if we would have opened up our butternut squash and scraped out the seeds, we would have obviously, we, we could have gone to the trouble of drying them and toasting them in the oven. But um, you can buy just regular green pepita seeds, um, pumpkin seeds, and then dry toast them in the oven without any oil whatsoever. Again, that same principle of the Maillard reaction uh, it is, uh, is present here. The other thing that we can use to garnish our soup uh, is toasted, uh, toasted coconut. And I always love having toasted coconut, toasted pepita seeds, I even toast my hemp seeds, pretty much all my nuts and seeds for garnish, I toast because it gives it a much better flavor uh, when, um, uh, when it comes to garnishing and finishing a dish. So that is our, um, this is our, uh, this is our moqueca soup. This is our squash moqueca. If we wanted to add uh, salmon or if we wanted to add other vegetables and make it a more traditional one dish meal, we can that. So one of the things that I like to do with this particular recipe at, uh, during Thanksgiving, I will buy a, a beautiful sugar pumpkin or perhaps like a Cinderella pumpkin. I'll, I'll take the top off of the Cinderella pumpkin. I'll scrape out the seeds. I'll put a little bit of water in it, uh, season it very lightly with salt, cover it with some foil, and I will put it in the middle rack of my, of my oven, and I'll cook it low and slow, about 325, until the pulp is, is, is soft. I'll remove it from the oven, take some of that pulp, put that, use that pulp for this particular recipe, and then I will, and then sometimes I add fish and I'll add other aromatics like, um, like tomatoes as well uh, that I julienne or even uh, bell peppers that I julienne just for some color to have a, a nice rainbow of colors. And you can, Gently poach salmon or halibut or any other fish that you have that is fresh and available to you, and then transfer that mixture back into the pumpkin, and then you can serve it on a beautiful serving platter uh, at your Thanksgiving table, and it is a huge crowd pleaser. I've never served this soup where it wasn't absolutely um, uh, very well received. The other thing you can do is if you wanted to make it more Asian, you could add lemongrass, galangal, uh, kefir lime leaves. You could even add fish sauce to it if you wanted to go a completely different direction. So that's why I love the versatility of this soup. It is warming, it's comforting. It can, it, you, you can span the globe in terms of the influences that you use for this. And really at the end of the day, it's primarily plant-based. And I think that these pureed soups are a wonderful way for us to get more vegetables into our bodies because a lot of times people might not have eaten the onion and the ginger and the turmeric and the, um, the butternut squash as well as the sweet potato. But when you put them all together and you puree them, it becomes, it's, 
it's absolutely delicious. It's also wonderful for, for kids. It's who doesn't like soup in the winter time, right? So that is our, uh, that's going to be our squash moqueca. And now I want to move on to um, a warm smoothie recipe that uh, Carrie was talking about a little bit earlier. And what I like to do is I like to soak my dates. So um, I keep a jar in my refrigerator with dates and I just add water and I keep them there. And what happens is I can use the liquid that's inside that jar as well as the dates and it makes them a lot easier to digest. And, um, and a lot softer. So if I'm making something like a smoothie, it makes it a lot easier to blend. So our smoothie is going to actually have, um, these are all soaked dates that we've already soaked, that were, that, like I said, I, I pre-soaked. We're going to add a little bit of our uh, raw cacao powder. And we like to use a cacao powder from, uh, from Peru. That's what, what, what we use. I'm gonna add just a pinch of cinnamon and cinnamon is an amazing spice. Not only is it warming, but it also helps us regulate our blood sugar. And it also has the effect of, of making things seem a little bit sweeter. So if you notice that in this particular recipe that you had in your course guide, the only, well, the sweetener is coming from the dates. And dates are a wonderful nourishing sweetener because it's not gonna give you a spike. Um, and it's going to give you that sense of satiation. Um, but you're all, we're also going to use some raw local honey. And so I recommend that if you don't have some local raw honey in your pantry, find a local beekeeper that has raw honey. Raw honey is, is really a very healing ingredient, especially when it comes from bees that are in your area that have pollinated plants in your area. It can help a lot with your allergies. So we're going to add some, some, some raw honey to this. And you know, another thing that we could add to this, we could add some ginger. You could add some grated ginger to this. You could also add some grated turmeric. I'm looking at uh, my, my containers that still have a little bit of uh, grated ginger and turmeric in them. I love holding in anti-inflammatory superfoods like the ginger and the turmeric because it really helps um, uh, add just a little bit extra, um, extra horsepower to, to a recipe like this. The other, the, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some of our soaked, we're going to add some of our soaked uh, almonds to, uh, to to this particular recipe. Let me grab these almonds. And when you soak your almonds, um, the skin it uh, comes off very easily, and you can either peel the the skin off of the almonds for easier digestion, or you can choose to use it. Um, uh, you can choose to use the um, uh, the skin. I personally like to, to remove the skin because the skin is a little bit upsetting to my stomach, but it's really about your personal preference about what you, about, you know, what, what, what's best for you. But that's why we soak the almonds is to remove this skin and make them less, uh, and, and make it less tough for us to digest. And so once we, we put all these ingredients together, depending on how thick or how thin you want your smoothie to be, you can add water. You could also add additional almond milk. You could also add hemp milk or oat milk. There are so many different things that you could add. Um, you could even add coconut milk if you wanted to. But here, I'm just adding the the uh, I'm adding the almonds, the dates, the cacao powder, the honey, and a little bit of water because that's all we need. We're going to make our own almond milk really with these freshly with these freshly soaked almonds and the um, and the water so give me one moment we're going to do that and then we're going to add the rest of our savory ingredients to the soup that i have back here now that my onion has, has sweat you can't see this but you can see the steam coming off it the onion is nice and soft and we have the coconut Lake, the turmeric, the grated turmeric, the grated ginger in that particular, um, and, and now everything's soft and it's ready for the rest of our ingredients. So there goes our squash and now our sweet potato. And at this point, all we have to do is add a little bit more water. And 
again, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to our smoothie so it makes it easier. Okay. And if you'll give me just a moment, I'm gonna blend this and I'll be right back. And just to add in a, a few pieces to reiterate what Elizabeth has been sharing, um, that, you know, I think the big theme you notice is we really wanted to look at things that were really easy because, you know, there's a lot going on. And I know for me, finding things that are easy is kind of the key. So it's easy for me to blend going on. Okay, and then we're going to add But you'll notice that, you know, the soup is easy. If you have an Instapot, it's really easy to throw everything in there. And I know for me, that's something I use on almost a daily basis, if not a weekly basis, just because it is, um, oh, that's beautiful. Okay, I'll let you keep sharing. Carrie, I wish you were here. It smells really good. I wish I was there too. <laughs> so, um, so like Carrie said, this is a this is a, a healthy version of a of a milkshake. If we by using warm water, um, we can make this warm. If, there's also blenders nowadays that allow you to have a heater function, so you can have you can add all of your ingredients and then you you can activate a heat function to make your smoothie warm. And also, if you look at the one oh if you look at the smoothie one oh one. Uh, course guide that I included in, in your materials, it's a lot of do's and don'ts that I learned from Ayurvedic practitioners like Carrie about combining different ingredients and some of the pit, pitfalls really that we have with regard to, that we have with regard to um, making smoothies because a lot of people think smoothies are really, a lot of people think smoothies are really helpful, but we can do some pretty bad things to our digestive system by adding ingredients that don't work well together. And so um, this is an example of a Ayurvedically sound uh, warm smoothie. And there's other recipes that were included in your recipe packet that I invite you guys to try as well. I'm gonna try this smoothie. It's delicious. There's absolutely nothing missing here. This could go head to head with a chocolate milkshake any day of the week. Delicious. Carrie, do you want to go ahead and, and, and try and and, um, and serve the, the soup for, for our guests? Yep, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. And one of the you know, Elizabeth is amazing at teaching, but she's also really amazing at cooking. So I know one of the biggest things I missed from San Antonio was going to her house for some meals because it was always really, really tasty. Look at that well, color, it looks beautiful. Well, the other thing, Carrie, I like to say, and I know, I think you can see the color here. We eat with our eyes. We eat with our eyes. We eat with our, our obviously with our mouths, our ears, it's multi-sensory. So the olfactory component, walking into our, our homes, smelling these nourishing smells, seeing these nourishing, vibrant colors, just, um, it's addictive. It's amazing what your, what your body starts craving when you start giving it very nourishing food. And this, I'm, I, I just put some of our pumpkin seeds onto our, um, on, onto our soup. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of the, of the coconut here. And this is going to be a absolutely nourishing meal. I love soups for breakfast. I love soups for dinner. Obviously you can eat them for lunch, but sometimes if you're sick of your, your routine and you wanna you know, change it up a little bit and you have some of this soup that is uh, left over from the previous day, you, can, you, know, you don't just have to eat soup for lunch or dinner, you can also eat it for breakfast. So I'm gonna try this one too. I, I have the hard job here, Carrie. I get to eat everything. I know that's the, the hard part for us. Delicious. And I like the crunch with the with the pumpkin seeds as well as the um, the, the toasted coconut. It adds a sweetness and an earthiness to the to the dish, which is absolutely lovely. Mm -hmm. 
And that turmeric really gave it a beautiful color. Absolutely. Totally beautiful. So there we go. We have our soup. We have our smoothie. We have our hot tea. And we have our ginger pickle. So these are four recipes that our viewers can, can put into play on a weekly basis. Very easy for them to, to replicate at home. Who's hungry? If you weren't cooking along, I know I am now inspired um, to go make some of these things myself. And I think the biggest key is just, it doesn't have to be hard. Cooking in a healthy way, I think sometimes we can be intimidated, but I know watching Elizabeth, she makes it look really easy, but a lot of these recipes really are easy. It's just understanding how they can work for you, how they can nourish you, how they can support you. <laughs> Um, and just feeling, you know, really, really nourished and really, um, really vital. So I think that was a, a great way for us to look at things. Any last thoughts to share, Elizabeth? Um, I think that that I, I'm, I'm going to echo your sentiments on the fact that healthy food doesn't need to be intimidating. It doesn't need to be complicated. And really, at the end of the day, it is such a no-brainer. It's very inexpensive to do. And it is uh, giving you an insurance policy on your health. So especially right now in the time of COVID, we understand what pre-existing conditions now means in terms of our susceptibility to, to uh, COVID and this, this, this terrible situation that we're all dealing with in the world. And so why would you not want to make yourself more healthful? Why would you not want to insulate yourself from, from this kind of um, pandemic? So. Here we are. Thank you again for taking the time, Elizabeth. Um, I know I even took away a few pointers that I can incorporate. And uh, and we really, we hope you find some things that can inspire you. I think now we're all cooking more, we're in the kitchen more. So even just one or two things that you can use to shift your perspectives, I think is great. Um, and we hope you'll join us on Thursday, the 24th at 11, where we'll be talking about, again, the Chinese medical perspective on COVID, other ways we can boost our immune system, and just really continue to find ways to thrive, to feel good in this, in this crazy time. So thanks again, Elizabeth, and we hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye.